Welcome to Shorty Super Coach and welcome to my press conference. I said late last week in the weekend preview that I was gunning for a 2500 and that was reasonably on track until Cornelio went down. So that was disappointing and pretty much ruined my weekend of Super Coach. So take a look at my side now. A respectable score, you know, went down in the rankings. I think if Cornelio plays, you know, you get minimum. 2,470, I reckon. If he plays slightly off, a little less. If he plays at his best, we're cracking 2,500. So pretty reasonable. Very disappointing because, you know, you just can't avoid that. It would have been great if perhaps they told us that he wasn't right. I mean, he obviously wasn't 100%. He started at full forward. So I was concerned immediately, and, and then it went. And I wish it was back in um, 2010 or whenever it was. I, you might recall Brent Harvey did similar injury early in the game, scored zero, and we actually got the emergency. So that was the reason the rule was changed. Some of you have done that for a long time would remember, but obviously now a zero counts for zero if they play. So there was a little chink in the uh, system back in the day, but not anymore. So the back line was really solid aside from Sicily. Um, I didn't see that game, so I'm not sure as to why he suffered a little bit. Feel free to let me know. Hearn, I brought him in. He got a bit of attention early on in the game. I could see that Main just wasn't letting him get off the chain. So it was disappointing, but I think he'll be a pretty solid selection for the rest of the season. Midfield, going really good. You know, Oliver wasn't at his best, but Fife, Dominant, McRae, Cripps, Sloan, um, Crouch and Neil. Aside from Crouch, the rest were really good, and Crouch was just solid. So... Um, and then Cornelio is obviously the frustrating one, but uh, the Rucks, very, very good once again. I, as you can see, the VC on Crips um, wasn't interested in the 115. I went a little point of difference. I didn't want to go Grundy, like I said, and in the end it paid off, you know, getting Dangerfield playing a ripping game. 163 was great. Boak, really good. Kelly, I thought, scored reasonable for a game that he didn't have much of an influence on. Um, uh, Billings was good. Setterfield, really, really strong. He considers or continues to be really consistent. And Heaney, just sort of mediocre. He certainly hasn't been what I thought. I thought he would definitely average three figures this season. I said he was one of my top picks and an absolute lock in the forward line. Let's hope he can finish the season well, but we haven't seen that transition in the midfield. And while he's still playing good footy, we haven't quite seen what we probably expected. But look... The real decision is Cornelio, what are you going to do with him? I'll discuss this more on the weekend preview, but it's about time I have a look as well. I've only just sort of taken a look at Supercoach. I think off the top of my head, as you can see, I've got 320 in the bank and Dunkley needs to come in because that bastard's destroying me. I said, oh, Josh, look, I'll get you next week. This 160 at the very worst will do me. No, no, I'll score 200. So that just really shoots you. Um, oh, I must do that every video. All right. I'll... So what's Tunkley at? Is he uh, 625? Good typing there. Gee, I was so far off. Didn't even recognize. 625 and set of fields, what's he, 318, is he? 318, so what's that, 307k, so I can still do it. You know, my fear was that I might not be able to make it, and in a perfect world, I was only doing one trade this week. But Cornelio goes down, out for the rest of the season, we got to shake things up. So Dunkley will come in, I mean, providing there's no absolute disaster in the teams. Dunkley will come in for Setterfield, and that'll complete my forward line. Um... And that would leave me with roughly, I think, 15K. So probably best case scenario, I'm probably looking at 555. Zach Merritt comes to mind off the top of my head. Um, I don't think I'd be able to reach Trelaw. Cunnington's got to be considered. He is starting to get tagged, though. Cunnington and Merritt both copping a bit of attention we know Merritt can't really handle it. He's just dropped off a bit where Cunnington's been in red hot form, but last four or five weeks, he's actually got some serious attention. And I thought he would have been the sort of guy who could break that kind of a tag, but he, he hasn't 
quite yet. Higgins coming back has got to help him. Um, Taranto and Pendlebury. You know, Taranto is tempting because he's going to get more opportunity. But there's, the jury's out, you know. He's a, a younger type of player. You know, could he just really succumb to his first season absolutely full-time in the middle? Is there a chance he could drop off? Does he get more attention because he's becoming more of the main man in there? I'd have to, I'd have, to have a think about it, but he's a very good option, I think. And would be point of difference. We're probably starting to get towards the just irrelevant stuff now. I mean, I'm not going to find anyone there. I mean, you guys know that I like Zach Merritt. I love his ability to go big when he's really on, you know, easily racks up 30 to 35, tackles hard, a beautiful left foot kick. But these scores aren't setting the world on fire. You know, I remember he started the season really well, aside from the 67. He went bang, 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 and then was still pretty good. Okay, 87, 94, bang, bang, couple of 120s. But got the tag against the Blues, which I'm thinking would have been Kerno. Back up against the Hawks, solid against the Eagles, Giants, obviously didn't use the ball as well. And then the Swans, which I'm thinking was probably Hewitt or someone. And then, you know, on the weekend, he had 34 again, but obviously... Just didn't equate to a, a big score because that was one of his higher possession counts for the season. I want to look at Taranto because he's a guy, as I said, I hadn't looked at it, but he's a guy that I hadn't thought about. You know, Merritt immediately came to mind because I knew he had been off a little bit and would be cheaper. Um, just close that. And Cunnington is, is tempting. I just like to go just there, just to, just to see how many stats they had and that sort of thing too. So he had thirty six against the Tigers. Gee. See, even he is a bit similar to Merritt because he was the rage earlier in the season, that first half of the season. A really good opening month, a bit of a downer, big, you know, solid, big, big, and then even big one thirty one. But just this, the last six weeks or whatever. You've got a few lower scores and just, just the one one big one. Yeah. It's interesting. And look, I'd be hesitant to go with Taranto. It'd be a bit point of difference. It'd be ballsy, but just the fact that he's untried, like there's no guarantee I mean he I think he'll keep up really good scoring. But the Ability for him to potentially get tired, it's its a real thing. And the Giants, you know, often extra exposure in the middle does help, but extra workload, it might not be advantageous because without those big guns, teams may say, look, it might not be a hard tag, but they might just be like, well, he's their main weapon in there now. We've got to stamp down and clamp down on him. So, and Cunnington just... It's concerning, you know, his good has been very, very good. And it's been a bit of a difference from what we've seen throughout his career because he's really bumped up into premium status, averaging around 108. But for the rest of his career, it's unusual because he's just been between 90 and 100. Aside from this one, he's been just a, a good, solid midfield. So like a Dyson Heppel sort of scoring frame, you know, um, Ollie Wines, there's those midfielders who are really good, but just average between 90 and 100, where he's gone boom this year. Where what fills me with a little bit more confidence is, okay, Zach Merritt's had a good season so far. Um, as you can tell, I'm leaning towards him. Um, but he has averaged pretty well. Like, he's got really good numbers, more so here. Um, yeah, I mean, the fact that all three clubs are vying for finals, an important spot, so that's important. I just want to see, you know, you can really hone in now because 
it's such a short amount of season left. I mean, we can really assess the likelihood of a tag because without a tag, and you never quite know, but without a tag, I think merits a lock for about at least 100, perhaps 110, perhaps 130 if you can just catch fire. Adelaide, oh, it's a big game. I would say it's unlikely that they tag. Um, Greenwood sometimes does. The Suns, generally you can just eat up on the Suns. There's been some big scores against them all year. Port, no, they're not going to tag. The Dogs, you never quite know what they're going to do. They potentially can. Same with the Dockers. Collingwood, it tends to be Greenwood for a select few players, and that's not merit. So, look, I'm definitely leaning towards merit. I will look a little closer um, as as the week goes on. I think if you've got a little bit of coin to spend, and maybe you can get up towards your 600k mark, well, clearly there's some fruitful options. Um you know, there's definitely some likable types. I think if you even have a spare 30 or 40, you should be pretty fine in terms of finding an easy pick. But for those who maybe don't, like myself, you might just have to go to someone who's a slightly out of form because they're at that price range and back them in to turn it around. So it'd be really interesting, I think. But um, look, thanks for tuning in. Bit of press conference, bit of looking towards the trades. It'll leave me with two trades. Gee, cutting it fine. I've had to use a couple on some injuries of late, so fingers crossed I can hold on to the last few weeks, but we'll see how we go. All the best, and I'll catch you soon.